I am a history enthusiast, so I teach history courses and, and, and learn about history. Um, black women's position in political movements is always a curious one. We were sparked to action behind George Floyd's death, but there are so many black trans women who have been killed. There are so many black cisgender women who have been killed and brutalized by the state, um, by intracommunal violence. Um, and I had an instance last year where I met, uh, I was in a room full of black male pastors. This was shortly after George Floyd was killed. And we were talking about that. There was a conversation about whether or not black Christians should be at protest movements, which I thought was such a ludicrous question to begin with. But there were two black trans women who had been, um, one had been brutalized, one had been killed um, around that time. And we were kind of having conversation about um, where's the emphasis on that. And one of the men who was present was like, oh, well, this isn't the time for that. And I, I really had to, um, find a way to um, call him in, <laughs> call him out and call him in um, and and encourage him to reevaluate what uh, a movement for freedom and dignity looks like and who should be included and who shouldn't be included. And when we start setting those boundaries, um, then we're not ultimately going to get to the goal that we have to get to. So trying to be a voice that's constantly asking everyone to reevaluate who we're including um, and who we're ultimately fighting for so that we can get to where it is we're saying we're trying to get. Columbus is a little trickier when it comes to racial and gender politics um, and the intersection of racial and gender politics. Um, and so I see it almost being manifested in we are um, the leaders or the directors of specific institutions, um, but the, the work and the labor of those institutions um, is kind of propped up. But the, the black women who are running them are not necessarily considered um, as individuals, as humans, um, uh, as as just you know your neighbors, right? Who have certain experiences, who have certain types of grief and loss, just like everyone else. It's are you in a position to kind of prop up this institution? Are you in a position to kind of put out a certain type of labor? And then that's the extent uh, of of the value that they are seen to have added to our community. So there's a hypervigilance that we have with one another, um, that we almost have to have with one another as a form of protection. Um, but there's also a way that society um, sees us, um, uh, kind of looks at us through a microscope without really taking into consideration our humanity, without really taking into consideration our nuance. Um, so for example, um, uh, during the 2020 general election, Stacey Abrams was like really kind of propelled to this pedestal of all of this hard work that she was able to do to swing the vote in Georgia. Um, but she was praised insofar as her labor was able to offer a benefit. So no one was really talking to her about her personal life. No one was really talking to her about the emotional toll and the physical toll that all of that work was actually taking on her. Um, and it was almost like a thank you for what you're able to give, but none of us were really being deliberate about imparting something back into her. Um, and so I just really see that as an example of the way of, of in which our work is seen or the product of our labor is seen, but we're not really seen as few, full humans um, in this society. Mm -hmm.